Hello everyone, welcome back to Knowledge Base. In today's video, we will dive into one of the foundational concepts of Java programming, classes and objects. Understanding these concepts is crucial for anyone looking to master object-oriented programming in Java. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. So, let's get started. Here's what we'll cover in this video. Introduction to classes and objects. How to define classes in Java. Creating objects in Java. Attributes and methods within classes. Constructors in Java. Access modifiers. Examples and code demonstration. A quick summary and Q&A. Let's begin by understanding what classes and objects are. In Java, a class is essentially a blueprint for creating objects. Think of it as a template that defines the properties and behaviors that an object will have. An object, on the other hand, is an instance of a class. It represents a real-world entity that contains both data, attributes, and methods, functions, that operate on that data. In object-oriented programming, or OOP, classes and objects are fundamental concepts. They allow us to create modular, reusable, and maintainable code. Let's begin by understanding what classes and objects are. Now, let's look at how to define a class in Java. The syntax is straightforward. Public class class name. Attributes, fields. Methods, functions. The keyword class is used to declare a class, followed by the class name, which should be meaningful and follow camel case. The body of the class, enclosed within curly braces contains attributes and methods that define the state and behavior of the object. Once a class is defined we can create objects based on that class. The syntax for creating an object is class name object name equals new class name. Here class name is the data type of the object, object name is a reference variable pointing to the object, New is the keyword used to create a new object, and the constructor initializes the new object. For example, student student1 equals new student. This code creates a new object student1 of the class student. Next, let's talk about attributes and methods within a class. Attributes, or fields, are variables that hold the state of an object. For example, in a student class, Attributes could be int, age, and string name. Methods are functions that define the behavior of an object. For instance, you might have a method public void study that prints studying to the console. These attributes and methods are the building blocks of your class and define what an object of that class can do. Constructors are special methods used to initialize objects. They have the same name as the class and do not have a return type. Constructors are automatically called when an object is created. There are two types of constructors. 1. Default constructor. This is provided by Java if no constructor is defined. 2. Parameterized constructor. This allows you to create objects with specific initial values. Here, the student class has a parameterized constructor that initializes the name and age attributes. Java provides four types of access modifiers that control the visibility and accessibility of classes, methods, and variables. 1. Private, accessible only within the class. 2. Default, no modifier. Accessible within the same package. 3. Protected. Accessible within the package and by subclasses. 4. Public accessible from any other class. For example, in this example, name is private, age is protected, and the set name method is public. Let's see an example of how classes and objects work together in Java. In this example, the car class defines the attributes model and year, and the method start engine. The object MyCar is an instance of car with specific values for model and year, and it can call the start engine method. Let's demonstrate all the concepts one by one practically. 
Here I am using Notepad++ as an IDE and run all Java programs in command prompt. Here I am defining a class demo2 having main method which is a starting point of any Java program. Now save the program as demo2.java. Keywords will be highlighted after saving the program. Now I am defining one more class named student with the attributes role number and name. Let's define a parameterized constructor to initialize student object. Now define a public method display to show the student details on console. Here we are creating an object of student class S in main method of demo2 class. This object S is initialized here by using parameterized constructor. Now we may call display method of student class in demo2 class at the dot property of S object because it is public in student class. All public members of any class can be accessible in any other class. Only an object of that particular class we need to create. Let's save the changes, compile and run. Java C is used to compile and Java command used to run a Java program. And here is the output. To recap, we've covered the definition and importance of classes and objects in Java, how to define a class and create objects, the roles of attributes, methods, constructors, and access modifiers, practical examples illustrating how to use classes and objects in Java. As a next step, I encourage you to practice creating your own classes and objects in Java. Once you're comfortable with these basics, you can move on to more advanced topics like inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. That wraps up our discussion on classes and objects in Java. Do you have any questions? Feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Java programming tutorials. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. See you in the next video. Subscribe to our channel to increase your knowledge with the knowledge base. Thank you.